Hello everybody, my name is Barry Johns. I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of Studio Talk. Well, recently, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I added a Ferrofish Pulse 16 uh, Plus Matty version uh, to my existing um, uh, system here. Um, prior to that, I mean, the other interface other than that is an RME Fireface UFX Plus. It happens to pair incredibly well, incredibly well with the, uh, with the Ferrofish, like a hand in a glove. They talk to each other perfectly. And so uh, when I was putting this in, you know, um, uh, I had a lot of questions because there were some things that the manual out there is not clear at all. Let me just get that out of the gate. The manual's pretty vague. It doesn't really give you any examples of different things. And, and that's where I think they missed the boat on a few things. So what I want to do is kind of go over uh, the settings of mine and, and, and take a look at that and, and explain to you how certain things work uh, and to get that thing up and going. So let's kind of dive into this. Let's head over to the computer and, uh, and we'll kind of pull some things up and start to talk about it. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the back panel of the Fairfish Pulse 16 and talk about uh, what each one of these type of connections do and what they mean to you, okay? Let's start by talking about clocking first, all right? If you're using, um, uh, you're connecting to another interface, as most of you will, and most of you will be doing that via ADAT, then as long as you've got your ADAT connections, you can clock the Pulse 16 to uh, the clock of the ADAT unit. So you can either use the Pulse or whatever unit your interface is. You can choose which one of those you want to clock to. But regardless, uh, that you, you could do that via ADAT. You could also do the same thing via MADI, okay? But what happens if you have a dedicated external clock? Like back in the day, you had Apogee Big Ben, you know, um, and, and things like that. And so you needed an external clock. Well, you would do that via BNC. Now, you can use BNC on some MADI interfaces to actually transmit the audio connection as well. You cannot do that on the Ferrofish Pulse, okay? Okay, you can, BNC is only for clocking to an external dedicated clock, okay? So you would use that, okay? If you're not clocking to an external dedicated clock, don't worry about BNC, you're never gonna use it, all right? Now, next up, of course, you've got ADAT in and out. Again, I've talked about this before. You have up to 32 channels of ADAT IO um, on the back of the Ferrofish. If you're using ADAT to your computer uh, or to your interface, then you would, you would connect up via the first section of ADAT, one through eight, and then nine through 16 at 44.1 or 48. So obviously you can see here, you can see set number one of the ADAT here, and then the set number two is over here, okay? Uh, the one and two are represented by uh, the black are ADAT one and the white are ADAT two, if you're trying to figure out how that works. Uh, it probably would have been easier if they'd done two separate ins and out for ADAT one and ADAT two, but they didn't do that, okay? So that's how that's set up. So hopefully you understand that wiring, all right? Next up, we've got Maddie. Now, here's an important thing. Uh, you, when you go buy the Ferrofish Pulse, if you're buying it new or used, you can buy um, uh, um, an ADAT version or a MADI version. I think they've got a USB version too. I'm not sure about that, but that's not going to apply to this discussion. Okay, so uh, there's really no advantage if you think you're going to need MADI later on, or let's say, for example, you have MADI, but you find a Pulse used, Ferrofish Pulse used, that doesn't have MADI. Oh, let me turn my my phone off there. If you got a Fairfish Pulse, uh, if you're buying it used, an example, then um, then you want to add Maddie later. That's no big deal. You can add the Maddie option later on, and you just connect it through this little slot right here on the back of the unit. Now, that MADI option um, is, you're only gonna save about $50 or so by uh, going with, uh, buying the MADI version. You get a little bit of discount, but otherwise, don't sweat that. You can add that later on, no problem, all right? And then, of course, you've got MIDI I.O., which is self-explanatory, and then you have uh, your analog ins and your analog outs. And so that represents the rear panel of the Ferrofish Pulse. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is routing internally within uh, the Ferrofish Pulse. And basically what I'm talking about is you have 16 analog in and 16 analog out, and you've gotta decide, okay, how are these gonna go back and forth between my computer, my DAW? And your options here, of course, are uh, ADAT, you, and you have ADAT, you can go in and out, and then you have MADI as an option. Now, I'm using the MADI version, 
Um, but this, what I'm going to show you and talk to you about today is I'm going to show you how you set that routing up. Now you can access these controls from the front panel. I'll come back and show you a second how that's going, how you do that. But for right now, I'm going to talk about once you're at the routing window, I've recreated that in Excel to kind of be able to blow that up and give you some examples on how you would go about routing your analog inputs and outputs to your digital connections, again, via ADAT or MADI. So let's pull up Excel. Let's go over the computer, pull up Excel, and take a look at what I've got. All right, so here we are in Excel, and this is representing what you see on the, the uh, whether you're using the, uh, the Farrell Fish's very own app to be able to do this setting, and I'll show you that here real quickly. Let me just kind of pull that up. And now you're gonna see how this is just kind of representing in this grid mode. Now what you see on the screen here is basically the same thing that you're gonna see on a smaller scale on the front of the unit. So you can either do this via the app or you can do it via the menu on the front of the screen. But basically I've redone all of this and done this in Excel so I can show you some examples, okay? So let me get rid of that. So here we are redrawn. So what you have here are the columns, these columns over here, these represent the inputs, but analog inputs, ADAT inputs, and MADI inputs. The, the, the rows over here to the left represent outputs. So now you have analog outputs, ADAT outputs, and MADI outputs. And so we want to be able to connect our inputs to outputs. So if we want to be able to come um, out of analog one through eight, as an example, and feed that to analog input of eight at one through eight, then we would choose this box right here, all right? And so that what this means is analog one through eight is being connected to the inputs of analog one through eight. And conversely, nine through 16 would go right there. So analog nine through 16 is now going up to the inputs of analog of eight at nine through 16. So next we've got to focus on our, um, our inputs, okay? So here's our analog input. So if we, again, if we want to take our analog input one through eight, then we would come over here and put an X in right there. And what that's saying is our analog, our eight at outputs one through eight are connected to our analog inputs one through eight. And then right here, you would put that, you would, you would highlight that box right there to be able to send eight, eight at nine, uh, nine through 16 outputs into the um, um, uh, analog uh, nine through 16 inputs, okay? And so now let's say we wanna connect this via MADI, all right? So let's, get, let's X these out and get rid of these, all right? So now if we wanna come out and we wanna use MADI, and let's use the example of one through eight and nine through 16 again for MADI. So now if I've gotta be able to come out of MADI, and if I'm gonna come out of MADI uh, one through eight, I wanna connect that to my inputs of analog one through eight. So I would put, I would highlight that box right there and then nine through 16 would be connected. So again, I'm coming out of my MADI, okay? One through eight and feeding my analog one through eight inputs and I'm coming out of MADI nine through 16, feeding my analog inputs nine through 16, all right? And so that's what my analog is connected to. Now, if I need to take my analog outputs and do the same thing, I've gotta connect those to MADI one through eight. So again, so now we're doing output. So analog one through eight, okay, is going to be, this one right here, is going to come over here and go to MADI one through eight. And analog nine through 16 on my outputs is gonna go over here to MADI uh, nine through 16. And so that's how you ultimately connect your inputs to your outputs. You've got analog output, uh, one through eight being connected to MADI input one through eight, analog output nine through 16, connected, con connected to MADI input uh, nine through 16. And in this, this co these columns right here, we have, anal uh, we have MADI output one through eight connected to my analog input one through eight. That's what this column represents. And MADI nine through 16 connected to my um, my outputs or my inputs of, of uh, analog nine through 16. So that's how you'd set that up. Now, if we go back over here to the ferro fish, that's what you're gonna see here. You're gonna see this is exactly, now I just move these over here to get them out of the way. I'm not using those, all right? 
Now, there, there's a reason you may wanna keep those connected, but that's a different discussion, really more towards total mix than anything else. But, so this here represents in this particular screen right here, I wish I could blow this up, but I can't. Again, I've got Matty outputs one through eight going into, uh, or I'm sorry, going analog um, outputs nine through eight, going to Matty inputs one through eight, analog nine through 16 going into uh, uh, Matty 9 through 16. And the same thing, I've got Matty out 1 through 8, going into 8 at, um, um, uh, or analog in 1 through 8, and then Matty 9 through 16. Now, if I wanted to use, as an example, let's come back over to Excel. Let's say, for example, for whatever reason, I didn't want to use Matty 1 through 8 or 9 through 16. Let's say, for example, I've got something else, another Matty unit, um, connected to, um, I've got something else connected via Matty, and maybe I'm using um, 1 through 16 for that. So if that's the situation, then I would come out of analog 1 through 8 and go into Matty 17 through whatever number that gets up to, and then analog 1 through 9, and then go through 25 for the next channel, next eight channels out. And then you come in here and the same thing. If now if I'm coming Matty, um, uh, I want to come out Matty um, 17 and go into analog one. So I put an X there. And if I want to come out of Matty 25, uh, I'm going to go into, the, I'm going to put an X there if I want to connect that to uh, my analog uh, inputs, uh, 9 through 16. So that's how you would do that. So hopefully this explains how you route internally uh, within the Ferrofish. Now remember, uh, remember on the Ferrofish, you have uh, two sets of up to 16 channels each at 44.1 or 48 via ADAT, right? So that means you can use uh, 1 through 16 as an example to connect to your other, your ADAT interface. And let's say, for example, you then wanted to connect an 8-channel mic preamp, right? Then that would be one connection alone. You would come out of that 8-channel mic preamp um, into... Um, uh, in, the, in the second set of ADAT inputs, okay? And so you could use that. So now if your your interface is going to have ADAT input that is connected and, con and talking to the Ferrofish, now what that does is give you the other 16 channels of ADAT input at 44.1 or 48. And of course, you want to do uh, um, um, sample rates of 96K or 192 or 88.1. Then um, what that's going to mean for you ultimately is you're going to be able to cut that channel count in half. And hopefully, you're already familiar with that. But then just look up ADAT SMUX, S-M-U-X. See what that means if you don't understand what I'm saying there. That's not what this video is really about. So you have that, plus you have, uh, you can use 16 channels of Maddie via this, right? And so Maddie's got a boatload of channels available to it. So as an example, I could connect up another Pulse 16 and add another 16 channels of Maddie, okay? And in a second, we're going to talk about the Maddie cable. In the event you're like me and you purchased your Pulse 16, I bought mine used and it didn't come with a Maddie cable. And so we're going to talk about that here in a second. Okay, so now we're going to talk about MADI connections and specifically cables. I bought my Pulse 16 used on Reverb, okay? And so it did not come with a MADI cable. And this was my first experience ever with MADI, so I really didn't know much about it. Now, I'm pairing mine with a, um, an RME Fireface UFX Plus uh, that has MADI I.O. on it as well as addition to ADAT. So I chose to use MADI on that. Now, the first thing that I noticed when I looked to go buy a cable, I didn't know any better, so I didn't really look at the connections on one versus the other, and I actually bought a MADI cable from Sweetwater um, before the Ferrofish actually arrived here at the house. So once it got here and I connected the MADI cable to the back of the RME, then I realized, well, holy crap, this, the connection on the, the MADI connection on the Pulse 16 was a smaller connection. So obviously that cable was not going to work. And, and so then I had to figure that out and I had to do some research to try to understand which one was which. I called Sweetwater, who are normally very, very, very helpful, um, but they really didn't have a clue about any of this. 
So you want to pay attention to whatever um, MADI interface you're connecting your Ferrofish to. You want to check to see if it uses one of two. Well, at least that's as far as I know. I know there's two uh, that are used here uh, of, of MADI cable. So let's talk about that. Okay, so here we are with the computer. We've got the cable in front of us. Now, this was the cable that I ordered um from Sweetwater, right? This was the cable that I got. And if you could see both these connections, they're the same size on there. And then that's when I realized, hey, that's not going to work. So once it, once I finished my research, of which I'm doing for you right now, um, especially if this is your first foray into Matty, and then so now we're gonna come over here and see, this is the cable that I needed, right? If you notice here, hang on a second here, Let's see if we can get them both up. It's not going to show them both like that. And this one here. Okay, so this is the smaller connection, and this is the larger connection. Okay, one is an LC and one is an SC. So if you have two different style connections, you're going to need this cable. If you notice, this cable here is only 10 bucks from Amazon. Works great, and, I, and so I've not had any issues with it. But you're going to need that. Now, that's only if you're connecting one or two MADI devices together. If you're connecting three, we'll talk about that in a second, you use a different cable because in that sense, you're gonna have to go to single cables um, versus these dual cables uh, in the same way that you would connect ADAT connections, okay? And so let's talk about that cable here real quick. If you, if you need to go um, via multiple MADI interfaces, uh, what you would do is come out using a single cable. Now, now this cable here you're looking at here, this happens to be an LC to SC, but what if you're doing two SCs or two LCs? You would just have the appropriate cable, but I'm gonna talk about that route cable routing here real quick. So now we're gonna pop over and take a look at the Faro fish, uh, and, and, and then from there, what you would do is take a single cable, regardless of which size it is, as long as they're matched up properly, you're coming out of MADI 1. So in my situation, it is the RME Fireface uh, UFX Plus. So I would come out of the output of that with a single cable going into the input of the Ferrofish Pulse. Now let's say, for example, I'm adding a second pulse to that, okay? So then I would come out of the Ferrofish Pulse using, now, now I'm gonna go two of the same connectors in my situation, right? So pay attention to your cables. I'm gonna come out of the first Ferrofish Pulse into the input of the second Ferrofish Pulse, okay? Then I'm gonna come out of the second Ferrofish Pulse as an example, and then go back to my RME, okay? So you see how that's working? RME to Ferrofish 1, Ferrofish 1 to Ferrofish 2, Ferrofish 2, back to um, the RME. And so that's how you would kind of, that's how you would do the, the cable connections for that. So just make sure if you have mismatched cables, you may need several different cable types, okay? Uh, depending on what you're connecting. So that is how you do it. That is not discussed at all. It's just assumed in the manual. So hopefully that helps you if you're doing Maddie. All right, well, hopefully you found this informative uh, and and hopefully this will help you get your Ferrofish Pulse, um, uh, get it up and going and get it set up in your studio uh, and, and maybe don't come into some of the roadblocks that maybe I came into just a tad and hopefully I've made this somewhat easier for you. So if, if you have like this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. I want to grow this channel. And also hit that like and that notification bell so when you know I got a new video out, um, it's, it's people like you watching me that helps me grow this channel. I'd like to continue do that if that's okay with you. I'd like to bring more content to you. But until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.